morning everybody so I'm in Oakland Oaklawn Cemetery in uh, Atlanta Georgia and uh, this is the burial ground of a lot of famous people so I wanted to come today to see where Margaret Mitchell the famous playwright and famous author of Gone with the Wind is buried so here we are in Oaklawn Cemetery and it's quite uh, expansive. I mean, it is a beautiful place. Uh, it's just so fine and the grounds are kept. You can hear the uh, groundsmen uh, taking care of the grounds as we uh, walk here. But uh, so here's the Mitchell gravesite. On this side, I'm told, are the parents of Margaret Mitchell. Her father was an attorney and her mother was an, a suffragist, and uh, they uh, they really had a little bit of money, and uh, they can't take that money with them, can they? So what does that say for us? That tells us that we have to have an eternal plan. So what is our eternal plan? So here are uh, the parents to Margaret Mitchell, the author of Gone with the Wind. And so let's go on the other side and they have her all tagged up. Looky there. See her sign? Margaret Mitchell, author of Gone with the Wind. I looked her up and by all accounts she was a member of Friendship Baptist Church here in Atlanta. And you know, that encourages me because Baptists believe in biblical authority now, there are other faiths that believe in it too, so I'm not touting one faith over another, but I'm just telling you what Baptists believe, uh, because she was a Baptist, so I'm just telling you about her. And um, here she is, she and her husband, Margaret Mitchell Marsh, born 1900, died Atlanta, Georgia, August the 16th, 1949. In the first six month, uh, months of her uh, writing her book, she sold a million copies. Hey, look. Look at birds. I am all about birds, I'll tell you that. But look at this. Look at the pennies left on top of her grave. Pennies mean I've come to visit you. That's what pennies mean. Someone left a button. There's a button left on top of her grave. And a little, looks like a little earring. A little diamond earring. How about that? Maybe Scarlet's been here. There are more pennies on the ground. They've fallen off. So, here we are at Margaret Mitchell's grave. So Baptists believe in biblical authority. In other words, Baptists believe that the Bible is the authority of God. So that's good that she was a member of the Baptist church. So she obviously heard the gospel. And then uh, Baptists believe in the local church. In other words, a, a, a person that is a true Baptist would be a member. And they would uh, spend their time developing the uh, Baptist church, their local area church. They believe in the priesthood of the believer. In other words, uh, a Baptist does not believe that you need someone in between you and God. You don't need another authority between you and God. It's you, and then you have that relationship directly with God in the heavens. You have it directly with Jesus. You have it directly with the Holy Spirit. So we have God in the heavens, God that we can't see. He's a spirit. Right this minute, I feel the wind blowing. And the Bible says the spirit is like the wind. You can't see from which it's come, but you know it's there. So that's God. God is a spirit. I know he's here, but I can't see him. And then God sent Jesus, who walked on the earth, who you could see, you could touch, you could talk with. And then when Jesus went to heaven to sit at the right hand of God the Father, the Bible tells us that he, within a couple of weeks, he sent the Holy Spirit and remember, it was a mighty rushing wind, and that Holy Spirit indwelled man. And that's what you have. If you know God, if you know Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. It dwells you. And that's what 
confirms when you do what is right, you are confirmed. Yes, yes. Or, mm, I don't want to do that. Mm, I shouldn't do that. Mm, I'm not going to do that. You know, that's the Holy Spirit in us. So, um, here we have Margaret Mitchell, the famous author of Gone with the Wind. And uh, she was a believer in biblical authority. Uh, if she took it to heart, of course, we don't know. Paul says, ask not whether a man go up or down. So we don't know. Uh, you don't even know my, I've talked to you for a couple of months now and you really don't know my faith. I mean, I can be talking and not really be true. So, you know, we really don't know someone else's faith except for by their walk. And so that's what it is. Our walk should meet our talk. And so I don't know Margaret Mitchell. I don't know how she lived her life. Um, I never met her. Of course, she died in 1949. So um, those that knew her uh, knew of her fruit. And hopefully she had fruit. Because if we are of Christ, we're going to have fruit. It's going to be succulent. It's going to be tasty. It's going to be good. We'll have a fruit. But uh, a Baptist, which Margaret Mitchell was a Baptist, Friendship Baptist here in Atlanta, uh, she believed in biblical authority, the local church, the priesthood of the be believer, which is just, just you and Jesus, you and God, you and the Holy Spirit, no person or uh, higher authority in between you at all. And then uh, we believed in baptism. In other words, when we trust God as Savior, we are baptized and it's, it doesn't, baptism doesn't save us. But what it does, it's, it's a picture of what it's like to, like to be dead to sin and alive to life. So we get baptized just as a picture of our relationship with God. And then we believe, as Baptists believe, um, we believe in soul liberty. In other words, it's your soul. You have the destination with God to take you to eternity. You know, it's your soul that you are in control of. No one else can give you salvation. Only by your own commitment to Christ can you develop your own salvation. And it's through God. God has to draw us. God draws us to our salvation. And so uh, we believe also that we're saved by grace through faith. Saved by grace through faith. So it's our faith that we believe in God and it's the grace, His grace, grace, G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. So um, here we are at Margaret Mitchell's um, gravesite, and um, I'm going to leave a little blo a brochure that I have uh, for her. And uh, it's a Gone with the Wind brochure, so I'm going to lay it right here beside these pennies that were laid for her. And um, there it is. And I think I'm going to slide a penny on top so that it won't uh, lose its by the wind. Wind is blowing a little bit, but uh, that was her book, Gone with the Wind. So I'm leaving her a little brochure today. A penny means that you visited. You might go to any of these uh, grave sites around here and you might find pennies all over them. Um, a nickel means, in military sense, they say that a nickel means that you served with someone um, and a quarter means that you saw them die on battle. So there are different uh, um, nickel, dime, penny, quarter, and they mean different things in military terms. But uh, to most anyone, if you take a rock and you put a rock on someone's grave or you put a penny on someone's grave, it's telling uh, others who come by, I've been here. So right now, just looking at what we see, I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and there are three pennies uh, on the ground in the back. So at least 19 people have visited Margaret Mitchell's grave. You know, she was a wealthy woman. She ended up very, very wealthy. And it's so interesting to me that um, after her death, her uh, rights to her book were sold to David Selznick for $50,000. And even now, they say that 250,000 copies of her book is sold every year. So wasn't that a wise investment for him? What an investment he made. And then I think about her family. I think about them having sold her rights to her book 
and uh, not receiving anything from her labor. So that's just an interesting thing, how she left behind a legacy and they sold the rights to it to someone else. That's an interesting thing. So um, her mother's family was Irish Catholic and uh, she attended Washington Seminary of Atlanta from 1914 to 1918. And then in 1918, she went to Smith College. And then um, she worked for the Atlanta Journal for a short time and she wrote under the name of Peggy Mitchell. Um, she got, ended up with a broken ankle and that is where her adventures to writing Gone with the Wind began because after she was home and you know they believe possibly boredom set in she began to write and in her writing they gave her a $500 advance and 10% royalty on the book. They say that some of the characters in writing that book she had already spent 10 years uh, developing it so all that's interesting so interesting. Listen as I fan the uh, Oakland Oak Lawn Oak Lawn Cemetery. I just want to read you the words to when the roll is called up yonder. And this is it. It's so fabulous. When the trump of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more and the morning re breaks eternal bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore and the roll is called up yonder. I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share when his chosen one shall gather to their home beyond the sky and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there let us labor for the master from dawn till setting sun let us talk about his wondrous love and care then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Romans 6, 6, knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with, so that we would no longer be sin, slave to sin. Romans 8 36 just as it is written for your sake we are being put to death all day long we were considered as sheep to the slaughter 2nd Corinthians 4 11 for we who live are constantly being delivered over death for Jesus sake so that the life of Jesus may be manifest in our mortal flesh for we who live are constantly be de being delivered over death if Margaret Mitchell truly knew Jesus, she is alive and well today. The roll was called for her on August the 16th, 1949. What about you? Do you know him? Have you trusted him as your savior? He is our hope. He is our help. He is our constant guard the scripture says in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Everybody, live for Jesus today. Make a difference and have a great, great day.